we went through this introduction uh, in the answer of this question. So we know that we're talking about the reality of death and we're comparing it to the sy sympathetic response. And you see that my thesis is that the reason that polyps want to do that is that they actually want to convert that sympathy to outrage, all right? And that that makes us want to um, you know, sort of go against the war. So I want to bring up this document that we worked on before where we just took these notes uh, on one of the poems, which is weapons training. And this is one that I'm doing. And I want to use it to talk about how you then write a developing paragraph. So the important thing is that um, whatever we set up in the introduction, that that is sustained throughout our response. So if I take, like, if you take my notes here on homecoming, and remember I did this paragraph, if I just take this paragraph, just steal it, okay, and I'll put it back in here as, as the end of my, as a continuation of my essay, my question is, if we read this all in one go, it doesn't make sense. So we know that my like my introduction, if we just go over it really quickly. Uh, life is the most precious commodity that humans possess. When it is lost, no matter the age of the individual, it causes sorrow. Okay, talking about impact. When that death is a result of war, the loss is significantly more tragic because of its preventable nature. Poets express the futility of death in order to generate a reaction that forces the reader to be equally horrified about the wasteful destruction of human life. So you see all of that aqua stuff is about impact, okay, and starting to build towards this thesis. They utilize vivid imagery to evoke a response in the reader that empowers them, all right, that's us as the reader, to convert their sympathy to outrage. It is in this, it is this outrage that then allows for an abject rejection of our involvement in any war where death is a reality. All right, and I'll sort of highlight that a bit green because that is a little bit of a combination of impact and of the thesis as well. Bruce Thor in his protest poem, Weapons Training, examines the brutal voice of a deranged drill sergeant to reveal the potential of dying, dying brutally in war. So I changed that because I remember in class I was a bit critical that that wasn't as good as it could have been. John Filcher in his moving poem, Touching the Names, reveals the empty loss caused by death. Once we respond with sympathy, these composers demand a stronger response in order to action change. So then if I go on here and I just keep reading, war by its very definition generates loss in a variety of ways. The ultimate sense of loss is death, but soldiers are often confronted by a loss of dignity and self-respect as well. Okay, so it's not like it's that far away from what I'm saying, but it is a little bit far away. And this is where we need to realize that I can't just prepare developing paragraphs and then use them. I've got to uh, adjust it to the question that's being asked. So when I look at my question, in my answer here, I'm sort of focusing on loss, but I'm not focusing um, you know, enough on the idea of death and sympathy. So if I go back to my notes here and I think war is a confronting experience. So if I come back to here and I focus more on confronting experience with death and sorrow, you'll see how it will slightly change this. So war by its very definition generates, I'm going to say so it generates confronting experiences that are ultimately revealed through the death of innocent soldiers. Tragic and brutal nature of these deaths outrages the reader. No, I'm going to change that. I'll go the tragic and brutal nature of death is examined to evoke sympathy. In the reader, this in turn creates what's the word I'm looking for? This in turn creates a sense of this creates a rejection. Rejection of 
everything. That wall stuff. Okay, then Bruce Dahl uses his voice as a poet to present an anti-war sentiment that highlights the damaging nature of war on individuals. I could probably leave that. It sounds pretty good in context with that question. In his poem, Weapon Shining, he explores the loss the young men will experience. So I don't want just the loss, the manner in which young men prepare for war. Right, the irony in the title is that they are not learning to use weapons, they are becoming the weapon. And in doing this to the soldiers, they lose their previous identity. The drill sergeant continues to denigrate both the men and their enemies to harden them. Okay, so they lose their previous identity. Which immediately creates which immediately what's the word I'd like? And in doing this to the soldiers they lose their previous identity, which immediately evokes the response and the reader. The drill sergeant continues to denigrate both the men and the women, the men and their enemies to harden them. The decision of the drill sergeant is forcing them to dehumanize their enemies so they can kill without thought. Now then indoctrinated in this belief, they can inflict murder. So connect there, death to plight. Finality of loss is revealed when yeah, the representation which actually reveals the ultimate loss or the dogma of death there. The horrific death. They fail to react quickly enough to the threats that surround them. Dor uses this graphic image to question the government's decision to send these innocent young men to a war where death is in where a brutal death awaits. Tragedy, the honor of death of a ship is written on the cover. Okay, so I want to get back to my thesis now that will also answer the question. I'll focus more. I want to focus more on how this demands a stronger response for us to change. aware of the damage being done to our young men and we feel a strange affinity for them. Door doesn't. Door
friends. Has to agree equal treatment for the impending threat so that we react. No, 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 no. So we react in unison with him in protesting against war. Even after the event, his poetry is studied as a reminder of the potential for death to occur. Okay, so you see there, my link's a little bit longer than it was originally, um, but it gets back to that question and, and that thesis that I've created. All right, so what I basically wanted to show you, and I guess, you know, like, you know, you had to sort of sit through me and my thinking and, and how I was going about it. But what I basically wanted to show you was that in preparation for this task, I'd already written uh, like a paragraph, okay, that, that I had. And all I had to do really was change the aqua, okay, which was the explanation to make sure that it engaged with the question. I had to change the point up here, okay, to make sure that it engaged with the question. I had to make sure I changed the link to make sure it engaged with the question. But what didn't change was my evidence, okay, my evidence remained the same. I sort of feel like that evidence was uh, good. I concentrated more on the idea of the confronting nature of war, and I probably could even do that more strongly. But basically, you can see how my notes, right, and if we go back to them, uh, the simplicity of those notes, I was able to use those and convert it uh, fairly easily to the question that I was being asked. So maybe in this war destroys humanity, I could make that stronger in here, um, you know, that that's, that's what would make us protest. All right, so just I might make a note for myself. Make the, uh, make the point that war forces a loss of humanity and that would also uh, generate a uh, response in the reader against war. Okay, so I'll just make that note for myself and I can improve that paragraph. The basic premise of my point is that if we take effective notes that we can then create you know, better developing paragraphs. So my, you know, sort of challenge to you now is to having looked at that and you've got this, you can pause this on the screen, you can have a look at it, um, is to try and write developing paragraphs, okay, for yourself, but make sure that your developing paragraphs continue on from the intro introduction that you have created, okay, so that you want that flow on effect of ideas that come down into your developing paragraph, all right, and obviously, you know, like these colors are all well and good. But at the end of the day, we're going to want to get to the point where we just write, okay? And it's just, you can see just paragraphs of writing, okay? Now, here's a little bit of a, a critique, all right? I said that we need to get to the point where we write uh, about a thousand words, okay, in uh, 40 minutes. Now, at the moment, I've got 500 words with just an introduction and a paragraph. So realistically, I can write maybe two more paragraphs and a conclusion, and that's about it. Or maybe even one more paragraph and a conclusion if my paragraphs are going to be that long. So we've got to start to think about that. Now, I, I would tell you guys, I could write two more developing paragraphs and a conclusion because I reckon I could write 1,200 words in 40 minutes. But if you can't, then you need to be sort of thinking about that in the back of your mind uh, when you're writing your essay because you, you want to be able to make sure you write an essay that you can actually write within the time frame. So that's something for you guys to consider, um, you know, when we're when we're getting to this point. All right. So hopefully that's been of some help to you, um, and you know you can now feel more confident writing a developing paragraph, um, you know, by yourself.